Hey guys, welcome back to Ignite. My name is Aaron Patterson and I am a sophomore out of the SJC. Do you think they know what the SJC stands for? Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Aaron Patterson and I am a sophomore out of the School of Journalism and Communication. Thank you for shouting that for us. Hi guys, my name is Sarah Manuel and I'm a sophomore out of the SJC as well. As many of you guys know, February is the month that commemorates black history. Sarah, tell us a little bit about the history behind Black History Month. Yeah, so Black History Month started to be observed by the American government in 1976 when President Gerald Ford decreed that February would be observed as a month to honor the accomplishments of African Americans in American society. In recent years, however, this has become much more than just an American tradition, with Black History Month now actually being celebrated in governments of four other countries, excluding the United States. Why is this important? Well, you're about to find out in today's episode, but before we go to that, we're gonna go to Cassie, who has interviewed a couple people regarding their thoughts on this particular topic. Hi, it's Cass, and I'm on the promenade today interviewing black students about Black History Month. Let's go. Why is Black History Month important to you? Black History Month is important to me because it's a part of history. I believe that people should know where we're from and who we are. It means to me that um, black people that have been around for a while who had trials and tribulations, they just really fought for us to do certain things in the world, be able to go to schools, be able to talk more, be able to meet other people, and just it's just a time to commemorate them and remember them. It means black excellence. It means, um, you know, the history of my ancestors and how they paved the way so I can live the life that I live today. The empowerment of showing leaders that wanted to make a difference in the world. A month to celebrate all the good things that black people have done for society. Uh, not just like all the things that we've been through, but all of the achievements we have as an ethnicity, like all the, you know, poems, inventions. The time that we're able to kind of reflect on like some of the struggles that we've kind of gone through in the past. And I think it just kind of highlights that and just kind of shows like who we are as a people today, so. Just to celebrate Black history from the times of like struggle to the point right now, we're very much successful. So it's a very, very proud time. I can, it's the struggle, you know, the struggle for equality, the struggle to, you know, make sure people are treated equally. That's what's important. And so I guess that is my answer. I feel like it's important to me because it shows like black people standing up for what's right. Like gr growing up, I've learned that uh, we didn't have it always good. And so learning what other people did for us, they even died for our, for our rights and our freedoms. It really shows to me like, it doesn't matter what kind of race you are or color your skin or anything, that you can always make a difference no matter how small your community. It means a chance for everybody to just take a second to appreciate what black people have done for this country and to just acknowledge their presence and the work they put in to be, to be great. And did you know that Black History Month is celebrated in other countries other than the United States? No, I didn't. That's really cool. Uh, I kind of did, yeah. And to be honest with you, no. I thought it was mostly just the uh, United States, just to be honest with you. Not really. I did not know that. <laughs> I would say yes, but I didn't. No, nah, I didn't really know. <laughs> I had no idea. I did not. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, definitely. They do it. They do it. I, I believe they do it in my country too, uh, Grenada. So. Oh wow. So, um. Yes. Yes. You yes. did. Yeah. Awesome. I did not know that. No. I thought that was just a U.S. thing. <laughs> I guess I found out now, but I, I had a hunch. I guess. <laughs> I did not know that. I really did. Wow. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome, actually. Wow, okay, bet. It's always important to get different insights from a variety of different people. Like Sarah said, hearing different perspectives is incredibly important. As I continue to learn more about Black History Month and grow in my own understanding, uh, it's really important to realize how little I actually do know in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, with that being said, I would like to introduce our guest speaker for today, Professor Alva Johnson. Thank you so much for being here. Professor, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? All right. First of all, I'd like to say that it is a pleasure to be here <laughs> with you all. I feel so honored to be among the first um, <laughs> on your set. I, am, I teach journalism classes here at, at Southern. I'm in the School of Journalism and Communication. Before that, I spent 30-something years in mainstream media as a newspaper reporter. Okay. So I've worked at several newspapers across the country. 
So we've written down a couple questions here that we want to ask. In our pre-interview, you actually told me a little bit about the being a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize, which best I can gather is like a it's like a Grammys for journalism, which I may be totally off about that. And that's why I want to ask is uh, tell us a little, a little bit about what the Pulitzer Prize actually is, as well as what you were a finalist for. All right. Well, uh, the Pulitzer Prize is the highest award that you can get in the field of journalism. It's uh, very competitive. It's named after Joseph Pulitzer, who was a New York uh, publisher, uh, very famous. And um, it's named after him because of his desire to preserve quality journalism. Hmm. So um, I was a part of a team of journalists at uh, Syracuse Newspapers, which is the first newspaper that I worked for out of college. I was very young um, at the time, and I was asked to be part of an investigative team that was looking at how prisoners in the New York State uh, system were receiving inadequate um, health care. And so I was one of four reporters. Um, my focus was really on the female prisoners and what they were experiencing, the high um, death rate that we were seeing. Hmm. So, um, yeah, we were fi finalists and we were very excited. We, it was unbelievable. Um, especially so young in my career, but it was it was a great experience, and it was for explanatory journalism. Okay, that's pretty awesome. Um, congratulations to you for Thank that. You. Thank you. <laughs> but um, before we get into our next couple questions, I want to ask you: Could you tell us and our viewers online like a little bit about your ethnical background? Well, I consider myself to be African American. I am native born here um, in this country, um, but my parents are from the Caribbean. My mother's from a small island called Nevis. If any of you have watched Alex, um, sorry, Hamilton, um, Alexander Hamilton is from Nevis. Yes, that's right. That's a little bit of Caribbean history. That's not <laughs> I, know. I didn't know that. Okay, and my dad is from the island of Antigua, and I grew up in a um, Caribbean community in the New York area in Brooklyn, where people were from all the islands. Hmm. So I'm very much steeped in Caribbean culture. Yes. So tell us a little bit more about that. Why is, why is Black History Month important to you? Well, Black History Month is important to me because the history that we have been taught in school has not been the full history. And there is a lot that has been excluded. It's from a very Eurocentric perspective. Hmm. Um, I just think about the many stories that we were never told. I don't know how many of you have seen Hidden Figures, Mm. The movie about the um, the mathematician uh, Catherine Johnson and the the role that she played in uh, in the in the development of the space program using her her math skills that was a story none of us had ever heard mm -mm. Yeah. you know and there are so many stories in the history books that have not been told it's really a shame that we have to have Black history mm. because it's really all one history mm. you know it's all a part of the history of humankind all the part a part of the the history of the United States, but unfortunately, it has been very slanted and um, shared from a Eurocentric perspective, and that has excluded many of the stories, many of the contributions of people who are Black, African American, Caribbean, um, you know, people who have African descent, and so I think it's very important that we try to um, learn that history, share that history, and um, inspire people with the stories that are told. Okay, um, so going back to like your past career, um, I heard that you headed up a team of racial demographics in Florida. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, um, I was a part of a race and demographics team. And the reason why they had that team was because there was a changing demographics that they were seeing um, happening in the South Florida area. So when they created the team, originally it had someone who was covering the Hispanic uh, community, because, you know, that's a big community mm -hmm. um, in that area. And then they had someone that was covering immigration, because immigration um, is a big issue there. And they had someone covering the black community. But what they began to notice when they were covering the black community, that there were some nuances. There was the native black community, and then they were the immigrant blacks. And they noticed that there were some differences. And so they decided to create another position uh, for someone to cover 
the growing Caribbean population and how they were changing the flavor of South Florida. Mm. And so I was hired as the first uh, Caribbean American affairs reporter at that newspaper. So that's interesting. It's, it's something that, uh, that we had talked about, and it sounds like you're touching on a lot, is that the U.S. in approaching these conversations has taught too narrowly about black history. And I want to ask, I want to ask a little about that and why it's important for us to broaden our understanding as a country of that. When you think about the slave trade, it was a much broader um, trade than we normally think about. Um, I think it would do us well to think of it more broadly and think about the slave trade in the Americas. Most people do not realize that it was, it was less than 5% of the slaves that left Africa and were taken from Africa um, and brought to the Americas. Less than 5% of them um, ended up in what we consider to be the United States, mm. right? Because when we think of slavery, we think of the United States. 40% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of the states, of the slaves, excuse me, ended up in Brazil. Wow. 40% of the slaves ended up in the Caribbean islands and the other Latin American countries in, the, in those areas. So the history that we've been taught and we've focused on is a very small part of the, the story of the slave trade um, and how it impacted this region of the world. Mm. So I think it's very important that we learn the full story, the broader story of the diaspora, the people that were dispersed people of African descent that were dispersed throughout the Americas. So there's just a lot to be taught. And the question is, why haven't we been taught all of mm. this? What are some of the ramifications of ignoring nuances when it comes to the black and white debate? I think one of the um, problems that it causes is a lot of misunderstanding. Mm. When people don't understand their common history, sometimes they can look at others as different. Um, I think for example, of um, African Americans, native born African Americans and Caribbean Americans. Sometimes there's um, a misunderstanding, maybe distrust, um, because they don't fully understand, you know, the different um, perspectives and the nuances. You know, one being a group that uh, of immigrants, their focus is very different when they come to the United States. Um, the other being a group that has been here for a very long time has experience a lot of injustices, and so their focus is very different. So I think sometimes, because we don't understand the nuances, we don't appreciate how much we have in common. You know, we're brothers and sisters, the same history, yeah. and we don't make those connections. Hmm. So I think it's important for us to understand the full history, all that has happened, and learn to see things from other people's perspective. Well, um, this one's actually not scripted, but <laughs> I do want to ask it because it's important. As a professor at Southern, and one of the things you shared with me was that Southern is one of the most diverse schools in the South. What would you say to the student body? Uh, there's, there's obviously a, a stigmas that Southern has and, and difficulties between races. What, what, what would you say to address some of that tension? I think we should embrace the fact that we're so diverse. Mm -hmm. The country is struggling with race relations, but we are the most diverse university in the South in the Deep South. Hmm. Our religion is the most diverse in the United States. Wow. All, of, all of our schools are among the most diverse. And there's a reason why. Adventists have been very successful going across the globe and spreading Adventism. I just think that we have an opportunity to show to the world, look, we are a very diverse religion because we belong to a God who created diversity and if we can learn to get along, if we can learn to share the history and not be so scared of it, mm -hmm. right? If we can learn to do that, what a witness we would be to the world. Mm. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for coming on, sharing your very valuable perspective. Uh, we're really excited, yes. really excited to be doing this and we're grateful that you can be here. Um, I'd really love to see a lot of the things you talked about come into play here on, on, on Southern's campus. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> Well, to those of you online, thank you so much for your views and your support. Uh, we hope to see you in our next episode.